Confusion area seven, ruling out secondary causes. In our opinions, we're surgeons and we're not as smart as you guys. We gotta make things really simple. Secondary causes of hyperparathyroidism. In our opinion, there's three causes of secondary hyperparathyroidism. All right, renal failure, and notice one of them is not vitamin D. Renal failure needs to be really severe, okay? You guys know how to tell that difference, okay? But somebody has a creatinine of 1.8 or something like that, or 1.6, that's not gonna give them secondary hyperparathyroidism. They're gonna have primary hyperparathyroidism. So renal failure, it could be, it's pretty long standing and severe. Gastric bypass, careful. You guys are gonna see this, you're gonna see it more and more and more as our patient population gets fatter and fatter and fatter. And because gastric bypass is becoming so common, insurance companies are paying for it. All bypass patients will get secondary hyperparathyroidism, okay? It's a normal, but this is a normal response of normal parathyroid glands. These patients, these patients have a problem absorbing some of the B vitamins and, and they have problems with absorbing calcium. They all should be on calcium, they all should be on vitamin D, and they all will to some degree, especially if they're not given calcium and vitamin D, all gastric bypass patients will get secondary hyperparathyroidism, their PTH will go at 120, 130, 150, but their calcium levels will be low. Their calcium level will be 8.9, 9.2. Don't operate these people. These people are not normal calcemic primary hyperparathyroidism. These people have gastric bypass and they have a normal physiologic response to a poor absorption of calcium. If you operate on them, you're not gonna make them better, you'll make them worse. Celiac disease, for the same, same instances, calcium absorption issues. So okay, yeah, we can throw out vitamin D. Yes, a low vitamin D can cause a slight elevation in, in PTH levels. In our opinion, we've never seen it higher than like 85 or so, maybe 87. Those patients will never have hyper, hypercalcemia. Their parathyroid hormone, their calcium levels will be in the high eights or low nines, okay? If a patient's got low vitamin D and, the, and their calcium's in the tens or above, it's a parathyroid tumor. So there are no causes of secondary hyperparathyroidism, no causes of secondary hyperparathyroidism that will give a patient a calcium level over 10. I keep re referencing 10 again because adults, we adults live in the nines, we don't live in the tens. Okay, all secondary elevations of parathyroid, of parathyroid hormone by external forces have low normal, low or low normal calcium. All right, most of you have seen one of these. We send you guys these things in the, in the mail, and we operate your patients. And uh, these things have evolved over the years. Now you know we use these little stickers, okay? Let me tell you what this means, okay, why we do this. And you probably, you already know this, you figured it out yourself. We'll, we send a parathyroid tumor a picture because we, we want you to know what we found. We want you to think parathyroid disease is a tumor, it's not hyperplasia, it's not multiple, it's not external forces acting on the parathyroid glands. Parathyroid disease is a parathyroid tumor until proven otherwise. So we, we show you it's A, it's a tumor, and this PTH level, this is in picograms per mil, so the normal range between 15 and 65. We'll show you this, and the levels are low. They're almost, almost always, when you get one of these stickers, it, it, it's going to be low. It's three, five, six, seven. It's below the normal range. That, this sticker is taken 45 minutes post-tumor re resection, okay? Meaning that that patient's remaining three parathyroid glands are dormant. They got no Golgi bodies, they got no mitochondria, they got nothing. They haven't made hormone in years. It took years to make this. Their normal parathyroid glands are dormant. They haven't done anything in years. And so as a, the, co the combination of those three normal parathyroid glands, they can spew out six, six picograms per mil of hormone. Okay, that's why we show you. So we want to show you that your patient's cured, we took out a tumor, and you'll get the sticker, so that's how you interpret that. Oh, their normal parathyroid glands are this. That means 100% that patient's cured, they'll never get it again, never say never, not gonna get it again, and that patient's cured. This number down here is how much hormone we've got, a, we've got an acid, we've got a method that we can measure hormone measurements in the operating room. We do not do intraoperative PTH assays, take way too long, the whole operation is over before we can get Never, never do that. We do it in real time. We measure how much hormone level each gland makes. Okay, so um, I'll talk about that in a sec, but that's what this number means. That means 
this tumor is making that much hormone. The other three parathyroid glands combined are making that much hormone. Do not look for external forces that are acting upon the parathyroid glands that will cause them to become large and overactive. This does not occur except in real failure.